Welcome everyone to a very special video that's part of Paleo Rewind 2020. If you didn't know already, this is an idea by Edge and involves 12 different paleontology YouTubers, with each of us covering a different month in 2020 and the amazing paleontological discoveries that were made during them. I've chosen to cover October, but be sure to check out everyone else's videos too, which are linked below, and to catch the final complete video which will be uploaded on Edge. So let's begin, and what a month October was. We'll start with the discovery that the tail of the theropod dinosaur Juravenator, from the late Jurassic of Germany, actually possessed crocodile-like sensory scales. Epidermal scales on the tail had already been identified in the very well-preserved fossil of the dinosaur, but this study found that a kind of scale with circular nodes were present, which have been interpreted as integumentary sense organs, similar to those in living crocodilians. This fascinating discovery means that Juravenator might have been using its tail for some sort of sensory function, which is just fascinating to think about. Next was the description and naming of a remarkable new genus and species of Oviraptorid from the late Cretaceous Nemegd formation of Mongolia, Oxoco avarsin. What makes this dinosaur so unique is the fact that it had relatively quite reduced forelimbs that possessed just two functional digits on them, indicating an occurrence of digit loss in theropods that hadn't been recognised before. The paper explains how the reduction appears to have coincided with the radiation of a certain lineage of Oviraptorids after they dispersed from southern China into the Gobi region where they expanded into a new niche that doesn't seem to have required the elongated forelimbs of other oviraptorosaurs, suggesting that some niche partitioning was happening in these dinosaurs. After that, there was also the absolutely incredible discovery of the world's longest fossilised human trackway in White Sands National Park, New Mexico. This amazing fossil track documents the journey of a person who lived over 10,000 years ago as they made an out and return journey of over 1.5 kilometres. This individual was likely an adolescent or small adult woman, and they appear to have had a child with them on the journey, as smaller footprints appear and disappear at various points along the trackway, indicating that they were being picked up and carried at times. Amazingly, footprints of a giant ground sloth and Columbian mammoth crossed the tracks too, giving us an astonishing glimpse into the life of these prehistoric humans who coexisted with these ancient beasts. Also in October was the description of a new Drapanosaur with a pretty awesome name, Skybalonyx Scapta. Originating from the Upper Triassic Chinle Formation of the southwestern US, the material that it was based on is only some disarticulated hand claws, but it was enough for some diagnostic features to be noted by the paleontologists studying it. As well as describing the new species, the study also compared the hand claw morphology of various drapanosaurs to the claws of living mammals and reptiles, discovering that Skybalonyx appears to have been adapted primarily to digging, expanding the known functional diversity of drapanosaurs in this formation. October also unfortunately saw the auction of the T-Rex specimen known as Stan, after the Black Hills Institute was ordered to sell the original specimen in order to pay a former shareholder who had sued the company. Make sure you've watched the September video over on Dinosaurs Will Always Be Awesome for a bit more background on this. On October 6th, Stan was sold to an anonymous buyer for the unbelievable amount of $31.8 million, making this the most that a fossil has ever sold for at an auction, beating the previous record when Sue the T-Rex went for $8.36 million in 1997. As many have already pointed out though, this is very bad news for paleontology. Not only is the original specimen potentially now lost to science, but the fact that it sold for such an extraordinary price may encourage a lot more people to try and exploit dinosaur fossils for commercial gain, instead of allowing them to be studied by paleontologists, as well as potentially resulting in researchers being prevented access to certain privately owned sites if the owners wish to sell their fossils instead, as happened in some cases after Sue's sale. A slightly more positive development that occurred in October was the naming and description of a new abelisaurid from Argentina, Niebla Antiqua. Found in late Cretaceous aged beds in northern Patagonia, the fossil material known for the species came from an individual that was fully grown at the time of death and was about medium sized for an abelisaurid. It was much smaller than other abelisaurs such as Abelisaurus and Carnotaurus, and certain features of its scapular coracoid were found to be similar to those seen in Carnotaurus, but different to all others, hinting at a unique anatomy in these particular South American theropods. Next, we had a brilliant paper published on the scimitar toothed cat Homotherium looking at their nuclear genome and exome, as in the bit of the genome that actually gets transcribed, to discover more about their evolutionary relationships. The study found that the Homotherium lineage was actually highly divergent from all other living cats, splitting off around 22.5 million years ago and not interbreeding with any other cat lineages since that point. The researchers were also able to identify certain genes that had been selected for, which potentially indicate this animal was adapted for cursorial hunting in the daytime, and likely had well-developed social behaviour. 
Plus, it was also discovered that these animals had relatively high genetic diversity, suggesting that Homotherium was far more abundant than the limited fossil record of the genus would indicate. Towards the end of October, we also saw the publication of an interesting study that looked at the flight potential of the Scansoriopterygid dinosaurs Ichi and Ambopteryx, which found that these theropods, which had previously been thought to at least be competent gliders due to the skin membranes stretched between their fingers, were very unlikely to have had any form of powered flight. Using aerodynamic calculations, the researchers even found that these Scansoriopterygids were very limited in their gliding abilities compared to other kinds of gliding organisms. As such, the study concludes that these theropods are not models for the early evolution of flight in birds, particularly as their wing structure is very distinct from the Paravians that lived at the same time, and so it appears that flight definitely did independently evolve multiple times within theropods, hinting at a very complex evolutionary history of flight in dinosaurs. Then there was also the naming and description of not one, but two new South American titanosaurs, Punatitan Coflini and Bravosaurus erurosaurum. Discovered in late Cretaceous aged rocks in Argentina, these taxa actually come from an area between the places where most previous records of South American titanosaurians are known from, therefore helping to fill in a gap in their known distribution. Both belong to the titanosaur clade Rincansauria, and the discovery suggests that this lineage spread throughout the south of the continent towards the end of the Cretaceous. Remarkably, a lot of titanosaurian eggs were uncovered at this locality too, providing more evidence of titanosaur nesting sites that appear to have been repeatedly returned to by these dinosaurs. And finally for October, there was a remarkable paper announcing the discovery of ancient mitochondrial DNA from Denisovan humans in sediments from the Baishia Karst cave on the Tibetan Plateau. This cave had already preserved a mid-Pleistocene aged mandible that was likely from a Denisovan, which was actually the first fossil evidence of these people outside Siberia. Then in October, researchers published their findings after having examined sediments in the cave that were deposited 100,000, 60,000, and 45,000 years ago, discovering that Denisovan DNA was present at all three of these times. The fact that Denisovans were long-term inhabitants of this cave would therefore seem to confirm that they were very well suited to living at high altitudes, an adaptation that could have been passed to anatomically modern humans living on the Tibetan Plateau through the interbreeding events that took place between our species. So that's what occurred in October. Although there was so much more that happened in the world of paleontology in this month, these were some of the highlights and most significant developments, and despite the other less than great things that were happening this year, it's nice to know that no matter what, the science of paleontology continues to progress. If you haven't already, be sure to check out all the other videos on the earlier months and subscribe to all the brilliant channels linked below. Tomorrow's video covering what happened in November will be done by Daphosaurus, so make sure to catch that as well plus the final couple of videos on Edge. A big thank you to Edge for organising all this and inviting me to join in too, it's been a lot of fun. Let's hope the paleontological discoveries of 2021 will be even better.